Hello, this is Numbers Lesson Five. In this, I will discuss rules of divisibility. Now, this, this is very very important concept, uh, and you have to understand this concept without cramming. You have to understood this concept. Uh, let's say divisibility by two. When a number is divisible by two, the last digit should be zero, two, four, six, or eight. Or you can say that number should be even. Any even number is divisible by two. Or number should be a even number. What is the rule of divisibility by four? Last two digits of number. Last two digits of number must be divisible by four. Last two digits of the number must be divisible by four. Then only the number is divisible by four. If the last two digits of any number is not divisible by four, then you can say that number is not divisible by four. For example, why? What's the logic behind this? For example, take any number. A B C D fifty six. I am taking this number. P Q R S forty six. I am taking this number. Now can I say that this number can be broken as A B C D into hundred plus fifty six divided by four. Now we need to check the divisibility by four. Now you can see that. This A B C D into hundred is always divisible by four. Here the remainder would be zero. If we remove the last two digits, remaining number is always divisible by four because it's a multiple of hundred. Remainder would be zero. Hundred by four remainder is zero. Zero into something is zero. Again applying the same concept that whenever you need to find the remainder, you have to replace a number with the remainder. Fifty-six is also completely divisible by four. Again, the remainder is zero, so overall the remainder is zero. Whenever the remainder is zero, it means that number is completely divisible by divisor. So, what matters the most? The last two digits, because previous number is always divisible. Look at this case: P Q R S into hundred plus forty-six. If you try to divide this by four, this is always divisible. No need to check. It's a multiple of hundred. This will give me remainder zero. Now things comes to forty six. You can see that four forty six is not divisible by four. Here the remainder would be two. Here the remainder is zero. So overall remainder would be zero plus two by four. Remainder is two. It means that this number P Q R S forty six is not divisible by four. So what we have to check whenever we need to check the divisibility by four, the last two digits of number must be divisible by four. And there is a logic. Because except the last two digits, previous number is always divisible by four. That's why we check only the last two digits. Same is true with the divisibility. Similar case is for divisibility of eight. In eight, we check the last three digits of the number should be divisible by eight. Last three digits. If last three digits of any number is divisible by eight, number is completely divisible by eight. Why so? Because let's say I'm taking another example. This is I'm drawing a line. A B C D zero four zero. Is this number divisible by eight? Yes, because the last three digit. Look at the last three digit zero four zero. If you divide this by eight, it is completely divisible. It means that this whole number. Is completely divisible. You don't need to check for A B C D. Why so? Because you can write this A B C D into thousand plus zero forty. Now this A B C into into thousand is always divisible by eight because thousand is divisible by eight. So remainder by eight would be zero. Whatever be the value of A B C D does not matter. So it means that. Whenever you need to check the divisibility of eight, only last three digit matters because the previous number, apart from the last three digit, is a multiple of thousand, which is always divisible by eight. So that's why we check the only last three digit. Don't need to cram. You have to understand this concept. Same is for sixteen. Similar, last four digits of the number must be divisible by sixteen because ten thousand. 
uh, the previous number will be a multiple of 10,000. For example, if I want to say that uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. This is a number. Now, can I say that is A, B, C, D into 10 power 4 plus E, F, G, H. If you try to divide by 16, this number is always divisible by 16 because 10,000 is divisible by 16. So there will be no remainder. Only you need to check the divisibility by this last four digit. If the last four digit remainder comes zero, it means number is completely divisible by 16. So very important for 16, you need to check the last four digit. Or you can say that if last four digit are divisible by 16, number is entirely complete number is divisible by 16. Similar concepts are there for 5. How a number is divisible by 5? Last digit. If the number last digit is 0 or 5, then only the number is divisible by 5. Last digit should be 0 or 5. What about 25? Last two digits of the number must, last two digits of n must be divisible by 25. Then only the number is divisible by 25. Why last two digits? Because the previous number except the last two digits is always divisible by 25. So don't need to check that number. For example, if I say that A, B, C, D, E, F, 75. This is the number. You can break this number as A, B, C, D, E, F into 100 plus 75. Now this part, it means the previous number is always a multiple of 25 so remainder is 0 if you divide this by 25 so only thing we need to check the last two digits here is 75 again the remainder is 0 so overall remainder is 0 and this number is divisible by 25 so only thing we need to check the last two digits similar concept to the 24816 again 125 5 cube last three digits of the number must be divisible by 125 same way 625 what we need to check last four digits if the last four digit number divisible by 625 number is completely divisible by 625 you can see that the rule for or concept for 24816 is very similar to 525 125 and 625 same way 5 power 1 last digit 5 power 2 last two digits 5 cube last three digit 5 power 4 divisibility last four digit same was true for 2, 2 power 1, last digit, 2 square, last 2 digit, 2 cube, last 3 digit, 2 power 4, last 4 digit. Next is divisibility by 3. By 3 the number, what to check? If you want to check the number is divisible by 3, sum of digits, sum of digits must be divisible by 3. Sum of digits must be divisible by 3. If sum of digits of a number is divisible by 3, the number is completely divisible by 3. What's the logic behind this? For example, A, B, C, D, E, this is the number. We need to check the divisibility by 3. Can I say this can be written as A into 10 power 4 because 4 digits are behind A plus B into 10 cube, C into 10 square, D into 10 plus e divide by 3 now you know that how to calculate the remainder if the remainder is 0 if the remainder is 0 the number is completely divisible now let's just, just calculate remainder we know that 10 by 3 the remainder is 1 10 power k divided by 3 remainder will always be 1 why so because 10 power k by 3 replace number with remainder 1 power k by 3 1 power k is 1, 1 by 3, the remainder is 1. That's the logic I'm telling you. This logic is not there in any of the books. So, you have to understood this logic. So, a into 10 power 4 by 3, remainder is 1. Plus b into remainder is 1, 10 cube by 3. c into 10 square by 3, remainder is 1. d into 10 by 3, one remainder is 1 plus e by 3. So, what I am left with? Can you see that this is a plus b plus c plus d plus e by 3. Only thing I am checking is sum of digits. If a plus b plus c plus d plus e is divisible by 3, it means that final remainder would be 0. If a plus b plus c plus d plus e is divisible by 3, 
the overall remainder would be zero and the number would be divisible by three. So that's why this logic is there. Sum of digits must be divisible by three. You must understood the concept. No need to cram. Same is for nine. Sum of digits must be divisible by nine. Then only the number is divisible by nine. And also, if you want to calculate the remainder, remainder by three, if number is not divisible, then the remainder is also a plus b plus c plus d by e. Whatever the remainder will come, that will be the remainder uh, number remainder. For example, if you want to calculate, just I am taking example one four seven five. Now this number is divisible by nine or not? For example, you need to check. Seven plus five, twelve plus four, sixteen plus one, seventeen. Sum of digits. You check this sum of digit. S O D. Sum of digit is seven plus five, twelve plus four, sixteen plus one, seventeen. Seventeen is not divisible by nine. Not divisible by nine. So this number is not divisible by nine. But what will the remainder? If you need to find the remainder of one seven one four seven five by nine. Now seventeen by nine. What is the remainder? Remainder is eight, so it means that one four seven five by nine remainder will be still eight. Very easy to uh, understand concept. Why so? Because this can be written as one into ten cube plus four into ten square plus seven into ten plus five by nine. Now we know that ten power any power of ten by nine remainder would be one. So one into one plus four into one plus seven into one plus five by nine. What we are effectively checking one plus four plus seven plus five by nine. Again, the remainder is you know that this is eight. Sum is seventeen. Seventeen by nine remainder is eight. So very very important if you want to calculate the remainder using divisible by divisibility by three and no nine. Just check the sum of digits by nine. That will be the effective remainder. By eleven, how to check the divisibility by eleven? Sum of digits at odd places. Minus sum of digits at even places. This difference, this difference should be a zero or multiple of eleven plus minus eleven k. It could be eleven. It could be twenty two. It could be minus eleven. It could be minus twenty two. In that scenario, the number will be always divisible by eleven. Why so? For example. A B C D E. This is the number. Five-digit number N. D R A B C D R are digits. Now, why this rule is there? Now you can see that this is A into ten power four plus B into ten cube plus C into ten square plus D into ten plus E by let's say eleven. what we will check effectively now we know that 10 by 11 the remainder is minus 1 10 square by 11 remainder would be minus 1 square by 11 would be plus 1 10 cube by 11 that is minus 1 cube by 11 replacing number with remainder even though minus 1 and 10 power 4 by 11 minus 1 square by 11 remainder is plus 1 It means that even power of ten gives the remainder as plus one, and odd power gives minus one. So what we will do? We will try to replace number with remainder. So a into ten power four remainder was plus one, plus b into ten cube by eleven minus one, c into ten square by eleven plus one, plus d into ten by eleven minus one plus e by eleven. Now what we effectively what are the numbers that are coming in plus a c and e so a plus c plus e minus b plus d divided by eleven if this whole number is divisible by eleven the remainder would be zero it means that what we need to check what is a c e these are the digits at odd places we start from the right side this is the first place odd place third place c digit. And fifth place, a digit. So a plus c plus e, sum of digits at odd places, minus sum of digits at even places, that is b plus d, 
if this difference that is what we are calculating look at this a plus c plus e minus b plus d if this complete is divisible by 11 the number is divisible by 11 and the remainder would be 0 and this difference should be how when this number will be divisible by 11 a plus c plus e minus b plus d when it will be 11 or minus 11 or 0 that's why very simple rule sum of digits at odd places minus sum of digits at even places this difference must be divisible by 11 then you can say that number is divisible by 11 that was all about divisibility lesson 5 i will continue with more on rules over divisibility in the next lesson thank you